Hey guys, welcome to another video in this channel. Today I have some very cool tricks for you, especially if you're working with characters. I'm gonna show you how to get the mouth of a character open. I've been working on this character on my free time for a couple of uh, weeks now, and uh, I think we're gonna be using him on one of our premium courses. So what we're gonna show you, or what I'm gonna show you is how to open the mouth of a character so that we can sculpt the inner side of the lips, the inner side of the mouth, and make sure that this character is perfectly ready for any type of animation later down the road. So before we go there, just want to quickly remind you that if it's not October 13 yet, you still have a chance to participate in our first 3D contest where we're giving away $100 to the first prize. You can check the video right around here. It's gonna be flying the little like flag information. You still got, at the time of this recording, you still got like four weeks to finish. So make sure to participate, join your Discord channel and let's go to the video. The first thing you need to do, of course, is you need to finish your sculpture. As you can see right here, I got a very good amount of detail. Can we push this for like further? Of course, we can make this thing look even better if we spend even more time. But I feel like we're in a good position to both open the mouth and prepare him to do maybe some textures. So what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to be cloning this so that I don't have to work on my main file. I'm going to be working on the secondary file right here. And what we want to do is we want to open the mouth just a little bit and create a little bit of a pocket of air where the teeth and everything is gonna be. So let's start by appending a sphere. And what I'm gonna do with this sphere is I'm gonna go to transparency and I'm gonna make this sphere very, very small like this, okay? Now this sphere represents the mouth back, which is where our teeth are, where our gums are, where our tongue is. Certain studios will tell you that they wanna have the throat go all the way back. So I'm just gonna start sculpting this to generate a little bit of the throat back here. And this is mainly when you're gonna have a character that's gonna be like, ah, screaming a lot, and you're gonna see all the way into the inside of the mouth. You probably have seen these shots where, where the camera starts inside the mouth and then it goes out and the character is like screaming. So you're gonna see the whole like structure, right? So in those cases, you definitely wanna have something like this. And then as we move forward, I'm gonna start creating a very, very thin effect right here. Now you can see I made a slight mistake here by not, <laughs> by not doing um, symmetry from the beginning. So let's go back there. There we go, turn on symmetry and we just bring the throat in. So we're just gonna create this sculpt. And this is a, I wouldn't say like new method, but it's something that's been done a lot more recently thanks to live booleans. We're gonna be using live booleans right here. So now I'm gonna be bringing the, the very like inside of the mouth right here. And we definitely wanna add a little bit more volume in this area. There we go. Now you gotta keep in mind that the jaw is right here and this is where we would have like the lower teeth. So you definitely wanna capture as much as possible from this area right here. Now, we're gonna use a function that's a function that we don't use that much, or at least I don't use that much, which is the freeze subdivision levels functions. Because as you guys know, this character right now is made out of subdivision levels. We have multiple subdivision levels that we needed in order to get to this very high level of a sculpture. Could we have done with this with Dynamesh? And the answer is yes. Of course, you could have done this with Dynamesh, but you would require a very, very high resolution, and it's not always the most efficient way to do it. So once we have this, I'm gonna hide this sphere just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the lowest of division level or probably close to the lowest right around here seems like a good idea. And I'm going to use my mask lasso to mask out the jaw of the character right around here. Even a little bit of the of the um, what's the word of the chin and of the neck is fine. Now that we have this, I'm going to control click to soften the mask. I'm going to control click outside of the object to invert the mask. I'm going to reset the pivot point and I'm going to move it to where the jaw usually pivots from, which is around there. And I'm going to move this back. OK, you can even press control and move this and it should give you a little bit of a, of a uh, like deformation effect. I'm going to soften this up a little bit more. There we go. Not too much. Usually when, when I'm doing characters and I'm opening the mouth, I, I don't like going like this because it, it becomes a, a different face expression and that could potentially create some issues. So you usually want to do like a, like a relaxed sort of like jaw drop. Very similar to what happens when you're like on the train or on the bus and you just fall asleep and you do this. Like that's the kind of like amount that you want to have. Enough so that when you do the bakes, the lower lips do not bake onto the top lips. So in this case in particular, I would say something like this should be more than enough. Of course, we're going to have to do a little bit of resculpting. So for instance, here with my move brush... Actually, I'm going to rotate just a little bit less. There we go. With my move brush, I'm just going to bring my, my neck up a little bit because I don't want to have a lot of uh, contraction right there. 
and there we go. So if we go all the way back to the, to the highest subdivision level, you're gonna see that we have a little bit more space in between the lifts. Keep in mind that this technique that we're doing will require us to do some resculpting. So unfortunately, that's not something that we can really uh, uh, avoid. We're still gonna have to redo things. That's why if I know that my character is gonna be going into a production pipeline for games or for something where I'm gonna need the mouth open, I will usually, after I finish the, I would say, the initial blocking of the face and stuff like that, I will open the mouth at that point so that I don't have to redo a lot of these details. If you wanna know a little bit more about the way we do these things, I do have a course about the stylized uh, character creation and we do go over that as well so over here i'm gonna just uh bring this thing back in i'm gonna light boolean and this one is gonna be a negative light boolean so as you can see that's gonna be cutting into the character and creating the whole mouth back that we need right there as you can see yes we are gonna be destroying a little bit of the overlap but that's it's part of the drill so here's where the freeze subdivision level is gonna be working because what we need to do is we need to do a remeshing okay so first I'm gonna make this a light boolean so I'm gonna go here to boolean and I'm gonna make boolean mesh this is going to, of course, do the Boolean operation. It's going to remove the mouth back from the character, and it's going to leave me with this hollow element. However, it's going to also delete the subdivision levels, and I don't want that to happen. I want to rebuild all of those subdivision levels as, as uh, nicely as I can. So there's two ways that we can do this. We can freeze the subdivision levels, and we can use the following technique that I'm about to show you, which is the reconstruction of the subdivision levels. So let's go. There we go. So as you can see over here, if we go to our U mesh, we're going to have our character ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to delete this. We don't need it anymore. And we're going to disable the light booleans. Now I'm going to append the new U mesh that we have right here. And as you can see, it's pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference is that, of course, this one does not have the mouth closed. However, this, we don't have any dynamesh. Everything is like just um, like a final, uh, if you can say that. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to smooth out the borders a little bit. Of course, let's turn on uh, symmetry. So I'm going to smooth out the borders a little bit here on the character. And once I have this... I'm going to use my trim dynamic to start flattening a little bit of this effects. Now, as you can see, it, it gets very complicated to work because we have a very high subdivision level. So what we need to do is we need to either C remesh or dynamesh, whichever one you prefer. In my case, I'm actually going to C remesh. So I'm going to go over here to geometry. I'm going to go to C remesher and I'm going to say C remesher. This will give me something that's sculptable. It's not animation ready topology. We're going to talk about that in a, in a subsequent video. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to see. I, I want to teach you guys how to you do like complex UDMs and texturing with this character. So let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in and I'll, I'll be happy to record something as well. Also, if there's any specific topic that you want me to talk about in our videos here or in our shorts, please let me know in the comments. I really need your help there because I've been running a little bit dry on creative juices. So I really need to to find uh, some things or some um, topics that you guys want to learn about. So there we go, we got this character right here. Now what I need to do is I need to check how many millions of polygons this guy has. As you can see, it's 10 million polygons. So I'm gonna go to this guy. And I'm gonna do one subdivision, two subdivisions, three subdivisions, four subdivisions, five subdivisions. 12 million polygons is what we're getting. And what we wanna do now is we wanna project all of the details that we have from this guy into the new guy. So we select our new guy and we're gonna go to project and project all. Now what's gonna happen here is it will try to find the projection on areas where it can't from the projection, it's gonna either mask it out or it's just gonna give me an error. And I'm gonna show you how to fix this error in just a second. Let me pause real quick because this might take a little while. And this is it. As you can see, we have finalized the projection. And now if we turn off our other character right here, we're going to see this. So it actually did a fairly decent job in projecting this thing. Of course, we get some errors here in the lips because it didn't have any information. You can see the corners of the lips also need a little bit of, uh, of re rework there. But I'm just going to start softening. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to the lowest of division level. And I'm going to start softening at the lowest of division level so that we get rid of all of those like super jaggedy like uh, polygons and effects. So we're just going to clean that up. And there we go. And by doing that, we've successfully opened the mouth of the character. And not only that, we have all of the information that we've sculpted before. 
So all of this points, all of the pores, the scars, everything is there. Now here, what I recommend doing is something called um, subdivision cleanup or subdivision by cleanup level. This is what we used to do back in the day when the, when I first started uh, like Seabrush. We didn't have Dynamesh back then. So if you had an error at a very high like subdivision level, you would need to go to all of the lowest subdivision levels and start cleaning things up. That's one of the things that I feel like a lot of uh, younger sculptors are, are issuing or struggling with. They, they just see Dynamesh and they think that's the solution and the and the um, and the best option to do everything and there's so many other technical things like i'm a huge fan of c spheres for instance where you can learn a lot of this as well so again as you can see just level by level cleaning all of the subdivision levels and then we go to the final level and all of the peaks and uh, and valleys should be pretty much over now it will be get it will be a little bit difficult to, to clean up some of the stuff right here because the lips are in this like open position. My best advice is use polygroups. So if we go all the low or all the way down to the lowest subdivision level, we can get to this polygons right here. And what we can do here is I'm gonna press Control Shift and use my select lasso to lasso out the lower jaw like this. Now, if you guys don't know about this, there's a very cool option on the polygroups menu that's called a grow. If we go, sorry, in the visibility menu, it's called grow, where you can grow more polygons, as you can see right here, and bring more of the loops uh, into, your, into your scene. So in this case, I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to leave this guys out like that. And here, there's a couple of different ways to do it. For instance, there's some people that really like to have a really like clean um, cut here on the, on the jawline. I'm not super like precise about it to be honest. So all of this, let's clean that up. So all of that, like jaggedy edges, I, I don't really care too much. What I do care about though is the uh, the inner like back of the mouth. So here I'm gonna invert this. And one thing I can do here is I can do some auto groups. And we should get are we getting wait? There we go. So you can see all of the math there. So I'm going to do other groups so that we get two different poly groups right there. Now I'm just going to hide this guy right here, invert, and this should give me the full like a mouthpiece right there. Perfect. So we just control W again to group this out and uh, that's it. So now we have successfully created a division between the poly groups. Wait, did we? I'm just going to do control W. <laughs> the colors were way too similar. So there you go. Now, let's say you want to close, close the mouth, right? Like we, we can start working here. Like this is what I would do. I would just go here and start going up in subdivision level. And once I'm in a, in a good subdivision level, we just grab our basic um, like clay builder brush right here. And we can start rebuilding the lower uh, lip. This is a very traditional way to do it. Again, we can use things like the trim dynamic and just clean it up to get the mouth start looking a little bit better. Usually the, the lower lip and the inner lips, they, they are quite puffy on the inside of the mouth. So that's why doing this polygroup and this division is really important because it will allow you to sculpt that inside part right there. And then we can do the exact same thing on this one right here. So we'll just go here and we start sculpting. Careful there with the back face masking. You guys already know. And if you don't, let me know in the comments and I'll explain it. So back face masking to to make sure that we're not pulling any of the points from the other lip, like that right there. How do we activate back face masking? On the brush, and then on auto masking, and then back face mask. There we go. So now I can work here without any fear of uh, pulling the other part of the lips down. So all of this volume, we need to start recovering it, rebuilding it. There was a scar on the, on the left side of this uh, lip that we definitely would need to, to rebuild as well. But as you can see, Little by little, our character here is recovering his uh, his lips. Let's add a little bit more volume here. We have enough polygons that we can do all of this, and uh, and there shouldn't be any issue. I would probably polygroup the the upper part of the head as well, so that we can work on this without having too much of an issue. There we go. That looking a little bit better. Now the final thing that we can do here. Well, first of all, we need to we do need to go uh, as slow as possible here, and this like corner of the mouth, you do want to make it a little bit sharper. Otherwise, it it might become a little bit difficult to to rig later on. 
Uh, this is another one of those things where if I know that this is going to be a very important character and you're going to see the lips a lot and stuff like that, I will probably do a proper retopology before even opening the mouth because it's easier to create the mouth back from a proper retopology. In this case, it's not really the end of the day if we don't do it, but it might get uh, or it might make sculpting a little bit more difficult. So here's the final tip or the final trick that I want to show you, and that is at the layers. We can use layers. So I'm going to go to the lowest of division here. Let's uh, grab our mask or our element. Oh, there we go. Mask it and invert the mask. And what we're going to do here is we are going to create a new layer. Oh, sorry. I need to go to the highest of division level. So we're going to go to the highest of division level. We're going to create a new layer and then we're going to close the mouth. Okay. So as you can see, this guy has a little bit of an underbite. Let's close the mouth right there. Actually, I kind of want to like soften the, the mask a little bit more. There we go. Let's move this up. Oh, that's way too high. Remember, this gizmo should be close to the area where the mouth is supposed to be. We can close this a little bit right there. And then at this point, I find it a little bit easier to use just my move topological and just move this thing up. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. Invert the mask and do the same thing on the upper side. There we go. Remove this. And of course, we will need to do some cleanup right there. I do believe we can go to lower subdivision levels and clean this up a little bit more. And now my mouth is closed. So if I go to the highest of the vision level now and start recording, we're going to be able to switch between an open mouth and a closed mouth. So with a closed mouth, I might be able to sculpt certain details that might be a little bit easier. Uh, we can send this to a rig or something so that he can get a, a better look at how the character is going to look. And with this one right here, we're going to be able to sculpt on the lips a little bit better. So I would say something like about there is a good point for the for the open mouth uh, element. Like you don't need to go super super aggressive. Like what like like what what like with what I had before. You can keep it like this as long as you don't get too much bake information. Again, from the top of the lips to the bottom of the lips, and uh, yeah. That's pretty much it, my friends. That's the way you open a mouth inside of ZBrush. Now we can go back to our original one, which just transferred this to the original one, and we are ready to go on to the next stage, which is more detailing, of course, all of this re-sculpting, bringing in some teeth or creating the teeth ourselves so that we get the the inside of the mouth and preparing this for um later a, a proper retopology for animation so that's it for this one my friends thank you very much for watching this i hope it's been uh, useful for you and if it was and you're not subscribed a subscription could be really good for us it's going to support the channel and it's going to allow me to continue to share all of these tips with you also again let me know in the comments what kind of other things you want me to do and i'll be happy to upload here in the channel that's it for now i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye